Hello, I am a Bin Song. I'm a Ru scholar, therapist, and a college professor. This audio is written and recorded by me to introduce you to the practice of Tai Chi and Eight Brocade Exercise in light of the philosophy and the practice of Ru meditation. I once described the spirit of Ru meditation as meditation in motion, which aims to extend the state of energy equilibrium across both static and moving forms of meditation. For doing this, I explain that breathing practice is a foundation. On the basis of this, we can start to practice meditation. In its static forms, such as sleeping, cross-legged quiet sitting, quiet sitting on a chair, and standing. After this, we add three moving forms of Ru meditation into our list: walking meditation, aid brocade exercise, and Tai Chi martial arts. Eight brocade exercise and Tai Chi martial arts should be counted as two most popular physical exercises that were created in ancient China and are still practiced by people all over the world. They are on the must-do list in many qigong clubs, and through internet you can also find abandoned instructions in both video. And word forms. I include links and this video to help you find these instructions. In Maryland and the Greater Washington D.C. area, I would also like to find friends to teach and practice these moving forms of meditation together. Nevertheless, I would not include a point-to-point -point instruction. On how to do these two moving forms of Ru meditation here. However, since we are talking about Ru meditation, it would be interesting to discuss the meanings of these practices to the tradition of Ruism. Using short videos, I will also demonstrate shortly how I do these moving forms of meditation in person. First. I need to remind you that there are three major spiritual traditions in ancient China: Ruism, Taoism, and Buddhism. And in reality, all these three traditions played a significant role in originating, documenting, and spreading varying forms of physical exercises and martial arts. For instance. Focusing on the Ruist side, I will tell you that the first person who gave the name Eight Brocade Exercise and documented its practice is called Hong Mai in Southern Song Dynasty. Mr. Hong Mai grew up in a Ruist family, participated in civil examination, got the highest degree, and appointed. As a scholar official for varying governmental posts, therefore we can discern the deep Ruist background of Hong Mai's scholarship. Another great example is Chen Wang Ting, the founder of the Chen style Tai Chi martial arts. He passed both the martial and civilian branches of civil examination. And his practice and scholarship on Tai Chi was versed deeply in the spirit of Ruist metaphysics and ethics. On top of these two examples, let's remember that martial arts is a very important component of civil examination, and for examinees that finally succeeded. To be appointed as a military official in the army, they can be seen as the martial side of the Ru tradition.
vis-à-vis -vis the civilian side of Zhuism, which people today may be mostly familiar with. But some great historicist scholars, such as Wang Yangming and Deng Guofan, they were also great military leaders. And for the sake of indicating loyalty, wisdom, and courage, all ruist virtues to their own country and their own people, and for the sake of self-cultivation, physical exercises and very martial arts are very much integral to the life of those ruist military officials. In a word. What I try to convey through these examples is that Zhuism, Buddhism, and Taoism, seen from their own philosophies and histories, are three self-organizing yet mutually interacting comprehensive systems. A person can broadly learn all these three traditions, form their own philosophical views. And practice martial arts with these views, or a person can be a very staunch advocate, devoted solely to one of these three traditions, and then embed the practice of martial arts in it. For me, I understand Zhuism as a tradition of labor arts. And advocate a version of anchored pluralism. In other words, I take Zhuism, its philosophy, history, and practice, as a major anchor of my personal life. But simultaneously, I also try to learn broadly from other Eastern and Western scientific and humanistic traditions. So as to enrich my own life and enrich the rule tradition that I am advocating. Therefore, in the following, I will mainly show how I understand and practice these two moving forms of meditation in a ruist manner. What I like the eight brocade exercise the most is its coordination of breathing with body movements. For instance, the first move is called to hand carry the heavens while regulating the three stoves. Three stoves here means the three major parts of our inner organ, from our heart to our lower abdomen. When doing this move, our hands start from crossing each other while rising. At this moment, we inhale. When we top our hands above our heads, we look upward and reach the limit of inhale. Then we look forward while holding the breath for a short moment. After that, our two hands fall down from the two sides of our body. During this process, we slowly exhale until a short pause to back. To our commencing posture. Look, the principle of doing this exercise is almost exactly the same as our other practices of Zhu meditation. For instance, in the breathing practice, the first stage is to use a series of numbers or a mantra to help our attention focus upon our breath. In the walking meditation, we match our steps to our breathing and contemplate varying parts of our body's movement while walking. Here, in the eight brocade exercise, we coordinate our breath with our body movements, which are designed to exercise varying parts of our body. And during the process. Our attention needs to follow each detail of the body movements, while feeling our person united as a whole with the environment. See how consistent the practice of Zhu meditation is. Because of this consistency, one of my favorite 
moving practices of Zhu meditation is actually to combine breathing, walking, and the eight brocade exercise. So I will take a deep breath, walk for some steps, and then do a move of the eight brocade exercise. How wonderful the feeling is after this! Another point I particularly like this eight brocade exercise is that each of its movements has a title, and combined all together, these titles read as a poem. And the spirit of this poem represents very well the holistic well-being that the Zhu meditation aims for. For instance, the seventh title reads as quote, "Clench your fist, show angry eyes, and then increase your vital energies and strength." Quote. According to Ruist ethics, no emotion is essentially bad. And it all depends upon whether you can have the appropriate emotion in the right measure and at the right situation, including the one of anger. For instance, Zhu Xi once said that, quote, "Anger caused by one's hardened temper should not exist. Anger caused by one's moral sense." Should not vanish. Therefore, when facing obvious social injustice, our social engagement needs to be supported by deeply non-relativistic moral sense of right and wrong. In this sense, the practice of aid brocade exercise, especially in this seventh move. Can nurture our rooted moral feelings, and prepare us for substantial social engagement, while nurturing an undisrupted inner state of tranquility and self-contentedness. Good. Let's move on to the practice of Tai Chi martial arts. What I demonstrated in the video. It's part of the Yang style, 24 moves of Tai Chi martial arts, which is also one most popular for beginning practitioners of Tai Chi. Regarding the practice of meditation emotion in a ruist manner by a human individual, nothing is more exemplary than Tai Chi martial arts. Firstly. The harmonious unity of heart, mind, air, body, and environment, which I mention, is a goal of Zhu meditation, is vividly embodied by this practice. You need to match your attention to your breath, and then your breath to the details of each move, and furthermore feel your intimate and solid position. Between heaven and earth, in a very holistic world view. In particular, similar to the eight brocade exercise, each move of Tai Chi has a name, and by pondering the name and its embodied move, we can furthermore appreciate the connection between earth and the human civilization, continuous to the nature. For instance, one move is called "A White Crane Spreads the Wing," and another move is called "Hands Embrace a Zither." How beautiful these moves are! Secondly, each detail of each move and their mutual connection is all about the subtle and smooth interaction. Between yin and yang aspects of the cosmic and human vital energies, and thus captures the spirit of dynamic harmony and meditation emotion very well. For instance, for the starting posture, you inhale, raise your hands, 
that is young, but your palms need to face inwards, and this is yin. When your hands rise to the limit, you exhale and move the hands down, which is yin. But simultaneously, your palms need to face outwards, which is another form of yang. Also, there are many circular or half-circular motions, representing the holistic commitment in this practice. Some move is solid, like standing solidly or closing your hands. While some is thought of as vacuous, such as making the hands position like holding a ball. You see, these are a number of minor movements to embody the subtle interaction between yin and yang, which is a careful unfolding of the process of dynamic harmonization. Thirdly, despite all these subtleties and varieties, all movements actually pivot upon our lower abdomen. And its related belly and back. This part of our body is like the ultimate pole, the original meaning of Tai Chi, around which all our movements are pivoting. Impressively, this is a distinctively Taoist idea. First, the term of Tai Chi is from the Taoist classic of change. And it is used to describe the ultimate creative power of the entire universe. Second, one central purpose of Ru meditation is to extend the state of energy equilibrium, or the one of centrality, to both static and moving forms of human activities. This means. Despite changes and vicissitudes, our life is always centered upon a principle, and the principle is simple, consistent, and adaptable to change. You see, this is another great example of Ru wisdom. Great! I hope you can find your own ways. To practice these moving forms of meditation, you take care.